thank you very much for having us and good uh, night, I hope uh, all has gone well. It's great to see crowds in rooms talking together again. Thank heaven. Uh, we are going to talk about governance because it's one of those things that everybody says they have. It's kind of like what is safe? What is open? What is fair? And of course, if you talk to somebody you're running a project, they say, oh yeah, we're safe and open is fair as all get out. Absolutely, we got all that open stuff and fair stuff. But what does it mean? It, unfortunately, there's no light meter. You can't hold up to it. I mean, McCoy, I saw you in the room, possibly accepting you. Maybe you're the light meter. But uh, generally speaking, you have to evaluate if you're going to put work into a project, whether you're investing time, code, people, resources, or support, whether you want to be associated with it or not, how it's going to come out, whether it will work, and whether it will be safe, open, and fair. Good news is we're not going to talk about safe because there are cybersecurity people and licensed people for that. And we're not being either of those today. Also good news, we're not going to talk about open because everybody on earth says, oh yeah, I know what open is. And that's, a, that's a, like a whole epistemological thing in our world, and that's not today's topic either. But we are going to talk about FAIR, and I am blessed to have with me a really smart community manager who knows all about the FAIR, uh, Amy Skavatic Perrin, who is going to introduce herself, and then I'll do myself. Amy. Absolutely. No, thank, thank you, Jamie, you, for Jamie, being able, able to help kick, kick us, us off here. here. Um, I, I actually, actually do have, have our, our abstract, abstract up here on a, a uh, screen, uh, screen to be able to, be able to make sure that we are tracking most of the things, things that we said we were, we were going, going to do as well. Do um, as well. Um, so, so, yeah, my name is Amy Skvarek Perrin. I am a Director of Development Programs at the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, and I liked governance enough that I went and actually got a law degree and a certificate in conflict resolution as part of that degree. So. Um, um, we've, we've got some, got some deep, deep theoretical, theoretical as well as practical, practical pieces, pieces to be able to, be able to talk about today. today. So, so Jamie, Jamie, back, to, back you. to you. Hi, I'm Jamie Clark. I used to be a lawyer who helped with startups and tech companies, and then I went to work for Oasis a billion years ago, and I was standards director for many years, and since then I've been its general counsel. But I want to say, since you're talking to two lawyers here, you don't have to be a lawyer on this governance stuff. You might occasionally need one. Honestly, if you get to the point where you're calling lawyers, <laughs> it's too late. Well, maybe not too late, but try and solve these fairness and openness and transparency and vendor neutrality things before you have to call the lawyers and you'll be happier. That's what we're going to talk about a little bit. Amy and I are competitors and pals, and we unofficially call each other for advice all the time. It's all part of the great circle of life, but we're both in the business of trying to make sure that the projects that we help or host uh, are not only safe and open, but also fair. Have good governance, and that, that's what I would we're actually counter about. that actually... we're really talking about predictability, predictability here. Here we are, we are talking, talking about, about governance, governance being, being a, a, a way, way to be able to, able to, to give your, your projects, projects an understanding of what, of what will happen when when, when, when a conflict comes up, up. And, being and being able to able say, well, oh, oh, it, it happened, happened like this like before. before. We've, We've written, written it down, down enough that we can repeat, repeat that process again. again. And, from and from there, there anytime, anytime that you run into this particular conflict, conflict you have a good understanding, understanding of how it's going to get solved. solved. So, so what you call fairness, I think I call predictability. Yeah, That's a great take because we can't ensure that people will act fairly. All we can do is set up, you know, the the wrestling ring and make sure that they both get in there uh, and they don't throw any illegal holds and there's no murder in the ring. Good point. Uh, I, I, I'm actually going to push on Amy back a little bit first though for this because as to fair, I think a lot of what community managers do is create predictability. And some of that is rules and we're lawyers so we love us the rules, but it's also about predictable methodology and explaining what's going on and reusing learning so that the world has a predictable environment when they want to cooperate. Amy, do, uh, don't community managers do a lot of predictability work? Is that kind of a big part of what you get paid for in the organizations where you help manage it? I mean, I mean yours, yours, you are there, there to provide structure, structure and, and understanding, understanding of how that structure works. works. Like, like, what you're what really you're trying, trying to be able to do is provide confidence, confidence for, the for the people who want to be able to adopt, adopt the work that you're, you're doing. doing. That you've actually, uh, you've, gotten you've gotten it right. right. You've gotten, you've, you've, you've thought, thought about the problems meaningfully, meaningfully and you've actually released a solution that you intend other people to both adopt and then contribute to as well. So, I think I'm answering your question in a way that is both 
accurate and also and like, like not not, not accurate, accurate at all because, because that's, that's not, not a thing that a community manager, manager wakes up every morning and says, and says, I am here, I'm here for, for predictability. Like, like I, I this is this, this is my job in here. No, they're here to be able to say what does my community need? What's my how do I respond to the needs of my community? And also how do I help move that community just a little bit forward? So, so it's, 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 I think, I think it's a it's principle. principle. I don't think I don't it's think something it's something that people, people are really, really um, aware, aware of, of at, the at the same time, time that, that they're, they're doing. doing it. It. I, I, think I think it's an underlying, underlying practice. practice. And I may have, I thrown, may you have thrown you off completely. So, no, I think you're absolutely right because you don't want to, you don't want to promise too much. We're not telling people if you come into this place, things will always work or always be fair or always people act appropriately. All you can do is say we've created an environment where you have a relatively good chance of being heard, of getting your turn, of mm -hmm. having your ideas considered, and it's still going to be a meritocracy. It's still going to be a community-owned thing, and you may or may not win the day, but we're trying to make it a reasonably predictable and open environment so that you have that shot, so you can ha have your day, so to speak, have your word. Do you have a uh, favorite example? example? Distributed. <laughs> <laughs> well, I... I <laughs> Not uh, naming names. Uh, you know what? Uh, uh, I think you know Amy, who works for Cloud Native, and I, who work for Oasis. We both think we do a pretty good job of creating places where that stuff happens, and so we're partially working from our own experience. But let me suggest this: rules in a open project, a distributed environment of open source, open standards, stuff like that, are guide rails. Uh, people don't read them all the time. People. Don't, you know, don't open the, the rule book in the morning to think about what they're going to do next. Just like you don't read a licensing manual every time you talk about making your stuff available. You just try and stay within the guardrails. But the way that the rules affect and protect what people are doing changes based on the configuration of the environment. Usually we're talking about semi-distributed enforcement. There's a set of guidelines. Uh, everybody in the com community knows about them. You're all generally expected to follow them. And it kind of works like traffic rules. You know, we don't try to physically stop everyone who doesn't come to a full stop at a traffic stoplight. We we ask them to stop at the darn thing, and everybody assumes that most of the time they will obey the red, green, you know, uh, uh, yellow lights, and that they will do what they're expected to do. So you have predictability. But there, there's a lot of self-enforcement involved. It isn't like someone is making you do all the things that the guidelines say. But consider how this changes uh, depending on the organization. For example, some organizations have a BDFL. Boy, are we going to talk about that. Uh, some don't have a single, uh, oh, sorry, benevolent dictator for life. One person who is the ultimate source of all rules. Uh, or Which I actually really disagree with is a good governance practice, practice now. now. I, I, I think I a think BDFL, BDFL is we'll probably not. not. <laughs> okay. okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. 20th century, you're saying? Well, but I just want to point out that there's a, a, a variant on that, which is kind of there's a Jedi Council, you know? There's not one dude, but there's four platinum members who get to tell you everything. And so everything all runs through one thing at the in the middle. And so no matter where you are, if you're not one of the co Council of Cardinals or the Minyan, whatever that group is, you're not getting any traction unless you talk to one of them. So it's just you get like four popes instead of one. Uh, but there are other groups that have no leader whatsoever. There are other groups that claim to be self-sovereign, your DIOs, your AI issues. And we should talk about that a little bit too. But yeah, let's go back to, to benevolent dictators for life. Because that's a we've inherited in tech a lot of those. We still have a bunch. Uh, some of them are struggling with how to succeed the, the departure or the wandering off with disinterest of the BDFL. Uh, others have real issues when uh, the, the one a uh, person in charge takes a very strong position that doesn't necessarily listen to the group. But yeah, are, are we are we are we mutating past that, Amy? I don't know. You tell me. I'm not sure. I mean, I, mean, I, believe, I believe we, we have, have to, to in order, in order to, be to be able to have, have the projects have stability. Have stability. When, you're when you're reliant on, on one, one particular, particular single, single point of failure, failure you, you don't, don't end up, end up with, a with a place that people, that people understand, understand what happens, happens when that when just kind of drops, drops away. away. You don't end up with a repeatable process. You don't end up with something that... People, People want, want to be, to be involved, involved in longer, longer term. term. They, they might, might use it. it. They, they might, might adopt some, some of the technology, technology coming, coming through. through. But, but I think I it's think a lot harder to be able to convince, convince a group, a group that, like, like, yes, yes this, this particular, particular piece of software, software 
that a community, that a community creates, creates that is totally dependent on this one single person being available, being available is, going is going to stick around forever. forever. I, think I think we have, we have to move past, past that. that. And you have, you to, have mutate to mutate into, into I think what, what you're calling like more like the Jedi, Jedi Council. Council. And, and that, that leadership, leadership is, is then, then distributed. distributed. So, I mean, I'm trying to think of like the BDFLs that can continue to be able to exist without being able to have some sort of like then stretched, stretched out, out network, network of, of how, how leadership, leadership and, and who makes decisions, decisions have happened. happened. Well, I will say this. Um, we know of a couple of organizations who have struggled or are struggling tremendously with their post-BDFL existence. And it's, it's hard. Really, it's a weak point in the governance chart. Yeah. It is. Particularly if your technical coherence comes from having said, at the end of the day, Everything all goes to this one dude, and it's always a dude. Just saying, this is a gender aware statement. Do any female BDFLs? <laughs> I, as I sit here thinking, you know, maybe they've already evolved past uh, their uh, male counterparts, but no, uh, it's always this one person who gets to be the choke point for all decisions. And if they check out or sort of drift off, or you just lose them, you got a real problem, and the community has to figure out how to evolve past it. So yeah, that, that's it is a point of failure. But what I want to point out about this is that basically a small council of non-transparent people in control, whether it's one or several, is basically like a, a super layer over your rules, right? Because you come in saying we're going to play this way, this fair, you know, public hearings, notices, open open calls, whatever. You know, we we read every poll, but we don't just turn away PRs we don't like. Uh, but if you've actually got after that somewhere up above the chart in the process chart, then it goes to the Jedi Council, and the Jedi Council, you know, doesn't like it. Then you're still pretty much operating in a non-transparent environment, unfortunately, and that makes it hard uh, if you're just one stakeholder to know whether you're going to get on the map or whether your needs or functional requirements are going to be met. So your, so argument, your argument isn't, isn't actually, actually about whether, whether or not BDFLs, not BDFLs or, or like all of that is is, is, is bad. Your, your argument, argument is actually transparency, transparency is the thing that is, that is underpinning, underpinning most of that, of that good, good governance, governance piece. piece. Have, have I? I have, have I clarified, clarified your, position your position, or have, or have I offended, offended you, now? you now? You haven't offended me. I, <laughs> I, I, think, I think my answer is both. I, I want it all. I want a okay, system okay. that makes it clear that the decisions don't go into a black box and get controlled in some way that's not open. And I want to understand what's going on so that if I'm a stakeholder, I know that my, you know, my PR or my issue or my compatibility problem has at least been considered. That it just 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 get mugged in the hallway in the middle of the night and no one knows what happened to it. Okay. Okay. So if so that's, that's true, true, what is what your, your to-do to -do list for, for a, smaller a smaller group that's, that's trying, trying to be able, able to say, to say hey, "Hey, I know, I know that, that I need, I need to, be, to be in order to be successful. successful I, need I need something, something like, like governance. governance. What would what be your to-do to -do list for them? for them?" Okay. Ooh, you threw me the tough one. Um. No, I threw you the one in the abstract have, that you actually wrote down. down. Yes. yes. <laughs> I think you have to have procedures. Okay. I think you have, I'm not going to say rules because sometimes it's not that formal. We're not talking bylaws. We're not talking a long set of things. But I think you have to have an agreed process way of doing business so that if the group who is attempting to cooperate um, – reaches a point where they don't all agree and someone wants to change this or suggest a, an addition or suggest an alteration, they know there will be a place or a virtual place and a time where they'll get to raise it, where everybody will see it, where you'll have an opportunity to comment on it, and where there's going to be some sort of resolution process. Doesn't necessarily always have to be votes. Uh, you know, IETF seems to be working still after all these years, setting up most basic internet standards, and they don't do votes. Uh, but you do need a consensus process so that the stakeholder or the advocate knows where they can get on the merry ground and ask for something, and it just doesn't get, uh, you know, vaporized without a, a without an audit trail. So that that would be my first requirement, uh, Amy, is a known process that everybody knows about and can rely on. Uh, and when you're a staff person for a foundation or a consortia or something like we are, you know, Part of job one is to make sure that in the rare cases where people don't follow those procedures, that stakeholders have somebody to call and say, hey, what about my thing? It, it, it went away and it's gone. And I don't get it. And this is unfair. And it's easier, especially because so many of these groups are 
competing either economically or in terms of goals. They need to have something to go to, a neutral, if you will, to say, hey, I got a problem. I think Amy mugged my project and she didn't tell me about it. So what do I do about Amy? Except I can't really talk to Amy because she's from X and I'm from Y and you know we're competing. So somebody's gotta go talk to Amy, okay? Or at least say, hey, maybe Amy just forgot to pull your, your request. Maybe it wasn't a bad thing at all. Maybe it was just, you know, we got lost. So let's see. So that so that's in my idea about process, Amy, leads inexorably to neutrals of some kind who can help move that along. And that doesn't have to be paid people. It could be volunteers, it can be somebody who's empowered to be a neutral, it could be a group leader, a community manager, you know, there's a lot of different ways you can do that. And in small groups, uh, they can be very informal ways. But if you don't have a process, and you don't have some way to go talk to somebody to help you intervene and work through it if the process isn't working or somebody jumps the guidelines, jumps the rails, then you don't have a, a, a governed community. Uh, we're gonna have to talk about governance embedded in tokens and that stuff a little later on, but that's my basic sh shopping list, okay? Rules and a conflict resolution neutral. What do you think? Will that do I it? disagree. I disagree. No, my no. shopping list missing Eggs and your, your, your shopping list is missing, missing some, some really, really critical, critical pieces, pieces in here. here. It's, it's who, who is actually in leadership, in leadership and why? And why? Why, are why are they here? They like who like makes who decisions, decisions in here? here? And, and how do you, how you get, get on, on that, that list of, of uh, I'm, I'm thinking, thinking about, about it as a maintainers, maintainers kind of list, list. Um, um, simply because that's what I'm more familiar with and I deal with all the time. And also a way to be able to get off of a maintainers list if you're just not there anymore. That kind of like I would I would actually put that process before being able to have. A conflict, a conflict resolution, resolution process, process. Because, because you're obviously, you're obviously going, going to be able to like, like want, want to know who has the ball to move, to move the, project the project forward. forward. And, and if you, if you don't, don't have a list of the people, people that like, like yeah, yeah, we respect, we respect their, opinions. their opinions. Here's, Here's like, like four of them. them. Here's, Here's how, how you can get, get on this list. And sometimes it's just as simple as being able to talk to talk to one of these four people on the list and they'll put your name up to like the group for a vote and then you're in. And that's where I see like the the challenge, the challenge is kind of falling, falling the most, most. When, we when we come towards being able to have like, have like governance, governance and process, process and what that looks like, like again, again for, smaller for smaller groups. groups. Um, um, I, I, I worry, I worry a, little a little bit that we are too focused, too focused on, on the old, old way, way of being, of being able, able to say, say again, that, that one group is the only, is the only people that have power, power in here. here. When, it's when it's totally, totally clear that like the, 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 the people who are also contributing, contributing not just code, code also, also have significant pieces to be able to make sure that a community is successful. Well, they're not just coders, are they? They're also no. people listening to the contributions <laughs> coming from other coders and being able to assess, you know, how that can be fit in or whether it meets functional requirements or, or whether it can be worked in somehow into a larger plan. And you have to have, you know, like you have to have perfect pitch for music, right? You have to have code ear pitch to be able to know if the stuff that's being sent in, when somebody comes in with some great idea that's poorly formed, you have to be able to help them structure it into something that is cognate you know that, that fits with the legos of the other stuff or detects it doesn't and that's distributed management right i mean in open source it's maintainers in open standards it's editors and we never have enough we never remember to take enough care of them we're always struggling with making sure that they have the support they need uh because this is all volunteer stuff right it was reliant on the professionals who are supposed to keep it running or the bdfo or the jedi alone nothing would happen so I, so I want to want go, go back, back to your, 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 your piece that you want to, want to okay, go ahead. Okay. That, that was it though, was it process? You guys can tell we haven't rehearsed this, right? Process, um, uh, which is kind of like rules, uh, a neutrals for the resolution and the, uh, the, the maintainers are equivalent. That's your I would say now. authority. Got the whole shopping list. No, 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 but no, it's but at least a start, start. Um, simply, simply because, because then from there, from there you, start you start wandering off into like, like uh, kind of niche things, things that, are that are directly applied toward, toward particular, particular like, like individual, individual groups. groups. I'm sure, I'm we're, sure missing we're missing something. something. I'm sure someone, someone will tell us. Tell us and... <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, that's right. Write the comments. Tell us what we're missing. But uh, yeah, it, basically, we're jumping into something tomorrow just as an individual, or or you know, looking for something that was relatively safe, relatively fair, relatively open. That's the opening lock and load that we've been looking for, even in a small, self-organized uh, group. Now, having said that, we have a bunch of phenomena happening in the world that are kind of fun. Uh, people claim to be self-governed. 
Uh, some of them claim to be self-sovereign. I don't think that actually involves crowns, by the way, but you've heard the phrase. And there's a whole debate going on about uh, artificial intelligence governance and smart contracts. That is to say, where are you when all the rules are sucked up into the code, and so the only thing you've got is validation against the code, which is supposed to embed all that fairness and openness and consensus stuff. Uh, it's an interesting set of challenges to meet those simple criteria that we just discussed in those environments, because essentially the claim is made that we've got all that stuff covered in design time, <laughs> so you don't have to worry about it at runtime, right? It's either, you know, by definition, it's fair because it validated. Um, that can be real challenging. Uh, I don't know, Amy, DAOs, are, are, are you and I going to be replaced by DAOs next year? Strongly, Strongly skeptical, skeptical about, about that, that. Um, um, in, large in large part, part because, because Code, code wants, wants to be able, able to run in an environment, environment that every, that every variable, variable is known. Is known. Law, law operates, operates in a place of so many, so many different, different fact-dependent fact -dependent gray areas, areas and I'm using, using law as a substitute, substitute for process, process here. here. I don't, I don't believe, believe there's, there's any, any one way to create, create something, something like, like an artificial, artificial community manager, manager sort of, sort of thing, thing to be to able, able to help arbitrate and solve these things. things. I, think I think you can, you can go, go a long way towards being able to have repeatable processes created through like more automation and all of that. And I'm really curious to be able to see where that goes, but I feel like it's always going to require some knowledgeable hands behind it, either like in front of it or around it. But I don't think we're going to be fully automated ever. And I look forward to being flamed in the comments. Not while we're still out here in the marketplace <laughs> being community managers and uh, and shepherds, though, I suspect. Um, I, it, there's a function for the way. Uh, one of the things that has been most annoying about Zoom, and my apologies to Zoom, Jitsi, uh, this platform, and all the other stuff that's out there been trying to keep us talking to each other during a period of time when we can't be in the same room. But... You know, a lot of our work in groups where we host, manage, or participate happens in the hallway. You talk, you have meetings, you review stuff, you'll see somebody's slideshow, you debate, you know, little points of pulls and code and stuff. And then you go to lunch and you go out in the hallway and the two people with the real problem corner each other and say, hey, can't we work this out? And it's that hallway space. It's those liminal spaces that often are the engine of progress. Uh, so we've had to really struggle uh, during this last two years of completely remote cooperation to make sure we are still creating those conversations. And that, by the way, often is. If it's not your neutrals, it's your maintainers, it's your editors, it's those people who take it upon themselves to think through and propose concrete solutions or compromises to then bring back to the group. And uh, I don't think smart contracts, you know, AI does that yet. <laughs> So yeah, sure that's a human function. So I mean, what are you and, looking and, for that human function when looking at an organization. What you're, what you're talking, talking about, about is durability, durability of, of like, like an, agreement an agreement to be able to make sure that, that like we've, we've hit all the edges, edges around, around here. here. We, understand we understand the things that are going to be able to come up that might derail, derail this. this. And I don't, I don't think, that's think that's something that you can, that you can do, do yet, yet with the idea of a. A generated, a generated contract. contract. I think I it, has it has to be, to be able to come, come from people. people. I am, I however, am, again, again, kind of kind of positive, positive on being able to say, say I think we can use the structures, structures to be able to make, to make it a little bit more clear, clear a little bit more understandable, but I don't, but I don't think, think it's going to be the complete, complete like, like 100% solution. Percent solution. Might get might a 70% get a 70 percent percent away. away. We'll see. We'll see. Um, I actually, I'm, I'm noticing time. Yeah, thank you, Ryan. Yeah, yeah. I'm noticing time. I want to be able to get time for questions from the room. Is that something that we can help out here as far as like my, our, our wonderful um, in-room folks? Yeah, moderator, we want to make sure we allow questions if there are any, and also you, maybe for the people online uh, who are not in the room, we want to make sure that, that they know there's a... Uh, uh, that there's a, an, an online uh, remote session after this because there's one more chance to schmooze after this session. If you can tell people about that, you have the details. I don't think we do. Let's see if Alex pops up at this point. I mean, they're at least listening okay, to us. Okay, not hearing him, Amy, so I guess we'll, we'll, Hello! Yeah, here he goes, here he is. Um, yeah, are there any questions here in the room? Um... No, apparently not. And also, I've 
haven't seen any questions from the from the from the chat on our online platform, but um, maybe no, that's fine. I just wanted to make comment. sure we had time for it. Any comments? Any additional thoughts here? Maybe. Uh, hmm. No, <laughs> Alex. Do we need um, to to mention for the online people that there's another hangout session on your website after this last session? Or am I correct about that? Um, actually, we didn't plan that uh, there is a would be a hangout session after that year, but you could still do one because our Wanda Spatial Lounge is still open. So, if anybody wants to to That's have it. a chat with you, you could go there because that is open all the time. Let me have a look if there has have new questions maybe arrived in the chat because there's a slight delay, um, but it doesn't look so. Okay, we will we will head to the wonder thing. The wonder spatial uh, launch, yeah. Uh, yeah, in, that's in, fine. Perfect. All right, so Amy, you're. Uh, okay. Uh, now that I've given space, maybe we have. Do a couple shout outs here. Okay. okay. No, that's no, great. That's um, I think. I think I feel, I feel like we have, we have hit a lot, lot of, the of the things, things that we wanted, we wanted to be, be able, able to talk, talk about, about here. here. Um, um, where, where do you, do you see this particular, particular governance, governance piece really, really falling, falling down? down? Where, where is it not is working? working? Durability, exactly what you said last. Um, one of the things you want when, you know, Alex and Amy and Jamie work together on a thing and then finish it, they're like, huzzah, and there's a release or a version or a final version or whatever you want to call it. You want to know that it's going to be around afterwards. You don't want to find out that the host just got bought out by somebody else and they've decided to depublish it or that, uh, you know, that, that, that the reliable version of what we all agreed to uh, starts to become point releases and degrades and you can no longer find the one we agreed to in the first place. So being able to know the solutions technical as well as who is who's your steward, if not your uh, or your neutral? How do, how do you know that when you go back to find version one to see if maybe there were some good ideas, it's still going to be there? And that is a real challenge with small operations. I mean, uh, the the Git family of tools helps a lot, but you still have a problem of going back and finding. Well, what did we agree to last time in the first place? So durability is important. Um, the uh, uh, the I should, I should answer your question by making a couple shout outs. There are people in the standards and open source world who spend a lot of time thinking about good governance. Uh, you should be aware of the open source handbook on good governance from OW2 and the good governance initiative that came out in November, 2021. You should be aware that there is internationally among all the, uh, uh, the agencies that regulate competition and, and commerce, there are treaties about this stuff, the World Trade Organization Technical Barriers to Trade Treaty, and it's Annex 3, which says, if you are going to be fair, and if you're going that we think is safe and can be used as, you know, by everyone in the world in a reasonable open way, here are some things you should look for in your governance. They actually give you a list, it's actually a laundry list in Annex 3. And that has also been picked up by a number of standards bodies. Uh, for example, Dean, in uh, Germany, ANSI in the United States, a number of them have guidelines they use to accredit organizations. If you want to be a submitter directly to uh, to an ISO or to an ITU or to the United Nations, you have to meet a set of criteria. And you know sometimes uh, they're not very carefully checked and sometimes they're really carefully checked. So that whole accreditation and guidelines process is also very important. Uh, as a sort of somebody, somebody outside has given a, you know, a seal of safety that says, all right, these folks are pretty fair. <laughs> and, and, you know, we can find their stuff. And they're not all owned by one company, et cetera, et cetera. Or, or, you know, if there is a BDFL, that person is staying on their medication and it's probably safe. Uh, so th that kind of guidelines are very important. And I have to say the breakdowns, Amy, the, the failures of governance are when that doesn't happen, when you've, you've, uh, everybody has gone forward happily on the assumption that everything's gonna be okay and they haven't attended to those things, and you find out later that it, you know, that those goals were not being fulfilled. Uh, organizations, when they try to make succession plans, all, often struggle with that. McCoy was, uh, Smith was talking about licenses a little while ago on this stage. Uh, you know, one of the problem is that we do all this stuff at design time, and we write things, we put in uh, code and requests and licenses and agreements. We all kind of have this big bag, right, that the community creates of all this stuff in the bag. 
But then in three years at runtime, when somebody's just using it, uh, bag owner may cease to exist. <laughs> um, you know, the records of those agreements, whether it's the license or who contributed or what considerations were given or what the functional requirements were, those records not, may no longer be available. So it's very hard to interrogate from the outside as a user. Uh, we don't really, ha I have to say, have our game on the way I wish we did with metadata. So that even if you go into well-organized Git repos and you find you know, some tags and some metadata that tell you, you know, there's nowhere near what you might wish for as a party coming in, whether it's a human looking at it later or automated code review, CICD work, you know, is there enough metadata and bag in there to say, no, where it came from, what it was good for, how long it's good for, what it works with. I mean, we're really uh, like every coder since the dawn of time under documenting the things that a person who comes here in three years would want to know. Because you know what, Amy makes cool stuff, but Amy's not always going to be where she's now, or always be Amy, even always going to be like, until we pour her into an AI. So <laughs> how do you find out about Amy's stuff post Amy? That's oh, oh. Th that. There's your deal problem, I think. Okay, okay. That, that, Jamie, Jamie, I'm surprised. I would have thought, thought, thought that you would have like, like highlighted, highlighted the, the free, free node, node piece for, for a. a where, where things, things could break, could break down, down as far as, as, far governance, as governance, because, because um, in, in reviewing that, that, that seems very, very clearly where, where governance, governance was kind of like used, like used to be able to, be able to affect, affect the takeover that a community, community just fully didn't, didn't want. want. Um, I, I'm, I'm, surprised I'm surprised that, that, that one didn't, didn't come, come to mind. To mind. Or, we, or we all have involvement with it, and sometimes we can't say things. Oh, it's more about, it's more about being able to look and seeing like what... Go ahead, go ahead. Finish, 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 finish that. that. I, I was just going to, you, you might want to say a little bit more about that because it's probably oh, sure, everybody sure. who will hear this doesn't know about Freenode. No, that's, no, completely, that's fair. completely fair. Um, um, so, so this was, this was I, want I want to say, to say last, last year, year um, where the Freenode free IRC, IRC community um, had their leadership suddenly change in a way, in a way that, that wasn't, wasn't really well known, known community or well understood. understood. And, and at that point, the mission and the goals of that community went completely in a way that the community did not expect. To my understanding, I think, I the, think most, the most the the, the, community the community that was, was there has now migrated, migrated to different, different places. places. But to, but to me, me, that's an example, example of a place where governance can be used for, for things that people, people did not intend, intend and, not and not necessarily an outcome that was predicted, predicted when this when was this all was set, set up. up. I don't have I a don't better, better example, example around, around um, well, being well, able to look at it. That's great. Let me let me let me make it generic. Charters are good. Because whenever you're cooperating in a project with a bunch of people, you're cooperating for a purpose with them shared agreed goals. And if you can identify the boundaries of your cooperation, like what are we here to do? Then you have some guardrails around understanding in advance that if we take a left turn or if we decide we're building giraffes, not you know hippopotamus, or if something like you describe happens, then you have documentation up front that says, you know, our consensus, our approval, our support of this depends on it staying within the box, right? I haven't quite figured out which way to do box here. But yeah. Uh, which so, brings so us back to that idea of predictability. Or, <laughs> yeah, it is, it's predictability. It's pretty, I mean, we, oh gosh, we. I mean, it feels like my life is convincing a whole bunch of competitors who are suspicious and don't like each other to get in the same room to do things. And we're not always talking companies, guys, here. Sometimes we're talking people. But in order mm -hmm. to get a whole bunch of folks with conflicting stakeholder goals to cooperate, you have to define the terms and the boundaries of their cooperation. And so when we you know, we'll run around and try and get an agreement from all of them to go join a project or a thing, a big part of the conversation is, our deal is that we will work within this scope, this box, right? And you don't have any obligation and you're not agreeing to anything and we're not gonna use your name and we're not gonna let your name be used for anything that's outside the box. And that's how they decide they can align for limited purpose or for little. And if you're a nation, they call it a treaty. If you're a, a, a coder, they call it, you know, well, we talked about it and we're gonna do this thing. But it's often not as well defined or documented as it needs to be. So it comes, so it comes down, down to being, being able, able to have, have an, an effective, effective mission, mission statement, statement that, that, that is then backed, backed up by a predictable, a predictable set of processes, set of processes possibly, possibly uh, an authoritative, authoritative source, source of, of who, who gets, gets power, power and, and a, a conflict resolution neutral. neutral. There, see, she just did it in one sentence. Should have I, I think we just covered our, our wide-ranging wide -ranging conversation, conversation. Um, uh, uh, and, and, and roughly aligned, aligned with what we said we were going, going to talk about, about as, well. as well. So. so.
I think with that, that, we might be complete. Absolutely. I, it, yeah, it's interesting you said mission statement, not charter, but I'm, I'm good with that. I mean, the, the, the reason we sometimes call it a charter is because we have our licenses at My Shop Oasis uh, align with and they're dependent on the charter. In other words, huh? I promise that I will give you the right to use my stuff if you put it in the bag, but only if it's within the charter. If the group, if the project, if the repo goes Borneo, you know, heads off in some unexpected direction, then the consenting participants, sponsors, and, and maintainers have the benefit of knowing that their obligation doesn't go there unless they all agree to it. So oh, I, Steve, you say, but that, that's uh, your you rules, say, not my rules. Statement, I say charter. Right, right. right. Your rules. Mission statements don't do that, right? They're just like aspirational thing. Yeah, but yeah, they've been governed govern and, and kind of guide, guide everything, everything else you'd want, want to be able, able to do under, under that. that. Because, because that, that, from, from, your, from your mission statement, statement from, from that, that, like, why, why are we here anyways, anyways then gives you, well, what, what processes, processes do we need, need in order to be able to make that mission statement actually happen? And when we run into conflict, who do we go to and how do we solve it? I think we're talking oh, no. about different nomenclature with the same basic phenomenon. Yes, yes. You know, you're absolutely like your laundry list a lot. We are in we're violent in agreement. agreement. I, I think we that laundry list. No, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. All right, I, I know that I know we are that nearly at time, time here, here, and I know, and that, I know that this is, we are the, the, the kind of kind of last piece of the day, of the day for, for folks at Fosbeck stage. stage. So, so Alex, Alex, I will hand this one back to you.